tweets that he made in the past regarding excessive taxes, etc. Because he has deleted those tweets. Is it true? I don't know. Have you checked? Try and check and see. And then let's have a conversation. But why will the vice president delete his tweets on the economy or his tweets on taxes? Is it because he can no longer stand by what he said in the past? Or he is now he has now seen the light that and that form, so he has made a U-turn. And those were some of the indications that the people at the uh, Occupy Bank of Ghana demonstration yesterday, they gave to our men on the ground. And I want to take this opportunity to salute our two gentlemen on the ground, Ishmael Amachi Mensa and Eric Mawena Egbeta. Put that pictures up for me. Ishmael Amachi Mensa, a cameraman, and uh, Eric Mawena Egbeta. Mawena is fast becoming the synonymous voice to demonstrations in this country, the voice and face of demonstration reporting in this country. Of course, every journalist should be able to do it, but he does it with some kind of finesse. And if you partner him with either Ishmael or any of our cameramen here, you are, you are in good company. And usually, everybody will talk about the reporter, but I always like to talk about my back end stuff because... Without the sound men, without the light men, without the cameramen, without the producers, there's, the work cannot be done. It's teamwork. So yesterday, if you watched TV3, listened to 3FM, Akuma FM, at, uh, Connect FM, uh, Unia FM, if you watched, you listened, you watched on Facebook at TV3 Ghana or 3FM 927, you were on Twitter. These were the duo who were, who were firing on the front line. But on the back end as well, you had a powerful news team led by Michael O.T.J. right behind them, Ali Napo and uh, Matilda, Matilda Baba Haynes and everybody else. So kudos to the young men. Uh, William Asidu as well was also there. So kudos, kudos to the entire team, but particularly these two. Now, yesterday, I want to also commend the organizers of the demonstration. Their resilience and their um, forward-looking attitude and their determination not to have their intended plan derailed must be saluted and commended. Because you remember that when they indicated that they want to embark on this demonstration, the police service took a back and forth, even at some point went to court. A back and forth, you can't do it, you would do it. You can't do it. It's, and, and it looks like for a long time, that has been the posture of the police. So, Shraj boss has said that sometimes the police's interpretation of the public other, uh, other act goes beyond what is within the rights of the police so to enforce. So, congratulations to the demonstrators and the organizers of the demonstration, the leadership of the minority in parliament, Kisela to force and the rest, and they spoke write how they had to speak sometimes it's bitter but you have to speak i want to also commend the police yesterday they did largely a professional job as compared to compare and put the igp's video up there a large professional largely professionally they did you know a great job compared to the first day of occupied julobi house where they misconducted themselves they did a very beautiful job yesterday. So yesterday, the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampari, had cause to go there to go and congratulate the police, men and women who were on the ground, who had stood with the demonstrators right from morning till late. He didn't need the regional commander to give him a briefing or report. You remember that when we spoke about the occupied Julobi house, IGP Dampari and the leadership of the police said they were waiting for a report from the regional director so that they can, they can, we can see the way forward. But yesterday he went there. The story was good. There was a good story to tell. So PR IGP Dampari stepped out there to go and collect his slice of the funds. Yes, yes, yes. Occupied Julobi the first day was a bad story. In fact, the way the police conducted themselves in the Occupy Julobi House demonstration and the way the government itself conducted itself, there was no good story to tell. So IGP Dampari won't go there to show his face. 
He's behaving like the minister who has been given to us to speak for government. When the story is bad, you will find him. When the story is good to tell, you will find him out there talking. Yes, yes, yes. So the police did well, but the IGP, we are watching you. Yes, yes, you said we should work with you, we'll work with you. Another observation I made from yesterday was that the MP for Medina, lawyer Xavier Sosu, misconducted himself with those vulgar words he spoke at the demonstration. Too bad for a member of parliament. The title on you is honorable. Manche, it is honorable. So for you to have spoken such vulgar words out there yesterday, the children are watching. They are learning from you. You are a lawyer. Children aspire to be lawyers as well. You are a member of parliament. They aspire to be members of, members of uh, parliament. And if by chance your government is able to win the next election, you could possibly have an appointment. So if those tapes are played to you about the things that you said, the vulgar words that you spoke in the language, would you be happy about it? It was way below you, Francis Xavier Sosu. You are my friend. But I'll tell you that they, they, maybe you were carried away, but you obviously didn't conduct yourself well with, with those, uh, what do you call it, those things that you said. Now, I am very disappointed, as the minority were, that the Bank of Ghana sent the head of security. And, you know, within the structure of the military, a wing commander is not a small boy. So a wing commander who is also a lawyer, who has retired, who has joined the Bank of Ghana as a head of security, and the Bank of Ghana says they have transformed, he has since transformed the security, you know, you know outlook of the Bank of Ghana. He was the one who was sent out there. If I were him, I wouldn't have come. That the Bank of Ghana, show their pictures, the governor and, and the two deputies, none of them could come. That the Bank of Ghana governor is not well, that the Bank of Ghana governor, uh, you know, is, is meeting IMF. Different, different stories. And that's, that's what happens. When you create a space, a lacuna, that's what happens. People will fill it for you. It was so disrespectful. And that has been the approach. Show their pictures, please. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari, the first deputy governor, and Mrs. Elsie Ado Awaji, second deputy governor. The Bank of Ghana wants us to believe that yesterday, all these three people were so busy that none of them could come out. They had to take the head of security to come out, to come and receive a petition. I've told you that people earn over 200,000 at the Bank of Ghana. Every month, though, they take over 200,000 CDs. Every month, they take it home. Tutushka, 2 million. It wasn't, was it not the MPP government that introduced or pay, 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 pay into our politics? You remember that? 200,000 and over. So put your picture up, please. We are suggesting that the three people, none of the three, the governor, the first deputy, the second deputy could come out to receive the petition from the minority in parliament. That's the suggestion we are making, that all these three people were unavailable to receive the petition on behalf. I mean, can you imagine if Mrs. Elsie uh, Adwawaji had come out with a bright smile and, and, you know, added some bit of warmth to it and had come to just pick the petition? It would have even calmed tempers. Dr. Maxwell Pokwa Fari, if he comes out, because he's often not in the, in the public domain, but, for example, if he comes out to pick the petition... Can you imagine? Well, the, the, the minority want them to go. They want them to be sacked. But you see, I'm not surprised that the Bank of Ghana is doing this. Before we get, go to that video, show me the Bank of Ghana board. Because the, these three don't work alone. They don't work in a vacuum. They work with a board. Show me that one. So you have at the top, the top three. Then you have all these fine individuals. I'm told Dr. Charles Dubahin left along the way. But you have all these individuals. Show, show all of them. We have seen the governor already. So scroll up so that we can see the others who are down there. Right? They are all part of 
what's happening at the Bank of Ghana. And the interesting thing is that 60.8 billion, 60.8 billion loss was declared by the Bank of Ghana. 60.8 billion, not their pocket money. 60.8 billion, not from their own coffers. 60.8 billion, not from their family, their family inheritance. It is 60.8 billion of the money belonging to the people of Ghana. And yesterday, when the people of Ghana masked up at the Bank of Ghana and they wanted audience to be heard, they sent a security man to come and pick the petition. That is how disrespectful we have become. Take me to the United Kingdom. You didn't hear us. We came to air our grievances, but you've not heard us. Hello, sir. Can you listen to us, please? Can you listen to us, please, sir? You don't need to have any requests. You didn't listen to us, please, sir. I've sat down with you before. Sir, you're not listening to us. You've not listened to us. You're going through the back door. You're going through the back door. You're going through the back door. Your citizens are here to address you. You are literally leaving. You are leaving. You are leaving. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Don't sit down. Sir, talk to us. Sir, we came to meet you. Sir, talk to us before you leave. This is not right. We came to meet you. This is not right. We came to meet you. The High Commissioner, you are not leaving, you are leaving through the back door. You are leaving through the back door. You are leaving through the back door. This is not right. No, this is not right. We deserve better. Look at how she's leaving. Everybody, look at how he's leaving. They don't care about you. 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 See. as I was saying, police officer, that was... Uh, His Excellency Papa Uswan Kuba, a very fine politician while he served in parliament. I don't know what has changed. But uh, yesterday I played for you a video of him in 2018 assuring people who live in the UK, Ghanaians who live in the UK, how the government was going to fulfill its promise of one constituency, one ambulance, one constituency, one million, you know, one district, one fact. He was telling it because the, 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 the goodwill was still there and the story was good. This was after the Occupy Julobi House demonstration in Accra. Some MPP people, MPP UK executives have also, have also, had also marched out people, and they went out there to do a counter demonstration. And then these young people you see here, they said, no, what you're doing there doesn't reflect the actuality. So they also went there to speak to the, uh, the High Commissioner and to also, uh, what do you call it, present a petition. He didn't stop to listen to them. He walked away, as I've showed you. Sat in his vehicle and walked away. The people who pay their taxes, the people who remit to this country for, for monies to be made available for him to feed, for him to be clothed, for his fuel to be bought, for his vehicle to be given to him, for his security to be intact, for his travel allowances per diem, etc. He failed to listen to them. And that has been the posture of this government. Remember the Ashanti region, school feeding caterers. They went to see the regional minister, Simon Osemensa. You saw the attitude. Do you remember Brian Echampo in Accra, Buffer Stock? You remember that? Now, Occupy Julobi House, even the president refused to listen to them and they sent a deputy minister. And the deputy minister says the demonstrators are stuck with him. So, the people were restricted at the 37 military hospital area. And then he said he was standing at the Jubilee House uh, traffic light. And I was wondering, if the police are preventing the people from moving away, how were they supposed to come and present a petition to you at the, at the traffic light when you had curtailed them at the 37 military hospital? And that's consistently, I've showed you about four or five examples, consistent the posture of the government in Tiobia. But interestingly, the president of the republic, who appointed all these people who are showing the people Pepe is busy and, and happy enough to go to the United Nations to go and call for reforms at the UN level. Locally, people are calling for a reform in his government. He is not listening to them. Locally, we are asking him to cut down the size of his government so that the cost that we incur as a people will be reduced so that the hardship 
could be mitigated. He has refused to listen to it. But he will go to the UN and speak fine English. Very fine English. And speak as if everything is okay in his backyard. And ask for reforms there. So he's asking for reforms, but he's refusing to undertake reforms. Agenda one, agenda two. Principle. The president has three months, one year, 15 months. Mr. President, do something before you go. Leave a legacy. Good morning. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. Figuratively, he bites as hard as he can. Okay, you know. Water is life. Water gives life. Water moves through nature in a never-ending cycle. Observe the beauty of water as it flows all around us, refreshing and restoring. Gaze in wonder at the stillness and beauty of nature. There's a harmony in nature everywhere around. 